So we're going to be mostly using Adobe Arrow, uh, the desktop version, uh, and this runs on both PCs and Macs. So hopefully it is not an issue for people. Um, there is a mobile version for certain types of Apple devices, uh, iPhones and iPads. Um, and they're really limited beta for some Android devices. So I think using the desktop version will give us uh, the most functionality and compatibility. Uh, and it's, it's a little bit nicer to work in. I think once you create your files in Arrow, you can uh, open them up on your phone and go out into the real world and start to create some augmented reality uh, recordings and things like that. That's going to be fun. But for, for working, I think this is a good option. I'm, I'm right now in, in create, the Creative Cloud app, and you should be able to just install it from here. You'll, you'll see your apps, and uh, towards the bottom, you'll see available in your plan, and you can hit install. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm installing it right now, and I will be opening it up in a little bit. All right, so I have installed Adobe Arrow, and I'm just going to click on Open to open that up. Okay, so it's taking a little bit of time to open up. Um, now, Adobe Arrow uh, lets you uh, create documents in here. Um, I'm, I, I have a bunch of other uh, files that I was working on, and they are uh, up in the cloud. So what's great about that is that when you take it to a mobile device, you can load your Arrow files from there, and you can uh, work with those. So I am going to create new right now and maybe I'll just write arrow lesson one. Um, I want to just open this up and cruise around here, do some really basics. Uh, okay, so we're in 3D space. This is just the uh, foundation here. You need to understand that uh, we're working in three axes, X, which is horizontal, Y, which is vertical, up and down, and you can see it here, X, Y, and Z. So um, I'm, I might refer to things as being in the X axis, Y axis, Z axis. Uh, Z is typically depth, uh, Y is height, and X is width. So uh, just be aware of those things. Um, OK, to get around, there's a few different uh, ways to do it. We'll move, rotate, or scale. Um, I guess those are the, the, the different things to think about. Uh, to, uh, or th those are the ways you can manipulate objects, and the way that you can navigate spaces also is similar. You can orbit, which is like a rotation. You can pan, which is like a move. And you can dolly, which is kind of like uh, zooming in and out. So when you have this selected, you can see I'm zooming in and out. And uh, we have move. I'm moving like this and this orbit tool. So this is going to be really helpful for us to navigate this space. The, these, I said, are for um, objects that we have. OK, so uh, we already come with a, a bunch of different starter assets. And let's just take some things and maybe put them in here. Uh, these are great because they're already textured. They're ready to go. We could bring in a pyramid. Uh, I think you, whoops, I think you can just double click. So I, I clicked a little bit too much. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to load it. And you'll see, uh, yeah, you have you have these in here. I want to point out this uh, kind of axis system that came in, um, and this is helpful to know. So the R, the this red axis is usually X, and then Y is green, and then uh, Z is blue. So this maybe helps you orient things. I think right now you can see I'm selected on the scale tool, so this is going to let me scale it but I could rotate it as well. And so you can see I'm rotating things. I'm just going to undo that and command Z. And then I could move things around. So if I want this to be moving up in space and uh, yeah. Um, uh, in Adobe Arrow, quick keyboard shortcuts, you can see one, two, three. If I want to just quickly orbit around it, I'll, I'll, I'll hold down one. I'm just, I'm holding it down. And actually, you know, I'm sorry, I don't need to, uh, 
I've been holding it down, but you could just select it once and then you can, you'll, you'll get the hang of it. Okay, so let's just bring in some other objects. Hit the star, boom. We'll bring this in. And you can see E, R, T, or uh, sorry, E, R, S. Uh, it's a little different than uh, Cinema 4D, which is a program I use. So uh, if we want to move things, the keyboard shortcut is E. Let's move, just move this back. S is scale, so let's scale it. And uh, yeah, we're just building some objects in here. There's, uh, there's other assets in here, like we actually have animated items. In here, we could bring in the armadillo, or I think I just brought in the robot character, maybe. Um, and it's actually an animation. There you go. Um, for things that are animated, you will need to uh, preview, go into preview mode to, to see what's happening here. To preview things, you can go into preview, but um, I actually have not added any animations or behaviors. So let me, uh, I think we have a few little, few little things. We have enough for us to play around with. Um, okay, so uh, if you had other files to import, you could import them this way, but uh, let's go into this behaviors down here. So we'll select the object and we'll add some interactivity to it. Um, let's start simple. Here's your pyramid. We can select this and we can add triggers. So um, behaviors that will happen on this. So uh, the, the different ones that we want to look at are start. This just happens in, uh, automatically in the beginning. Tapping. So if you're, uh, this is this is if you're using the app and you tap on the object, you can trigger a behavior. Or if you get within a certain distance, um, or even like looking at something, you can you can do that. So uh, I'm just gonna keep it simple. Do a start. Uh, okay. So st on start, we'll do something like play an animation, spin. Um, maybe we'll just spin it. Um, okay, and you can see what that looks like spinning it around there. You can select the axis you want it to go in. You can set the duration, ease in and out. You can see that it starts off slow, gets faster, and then slows down again. That's easing in and out. Um, if you want it to look like it's continually moving around, maybe you'll do linear. So here it's just going at a, con uh, a constant speed. And also, actually, you can set the play count to go uh, infinite. So this will just keep spinning and spinning. Or let me see. Uh, it should it should go? Oops, that's that's a back and forth. I think infinite. This sh this should just keep going. I think it's just stopping uh, in the preview. Okay, let's select another character or another element. Let's let's say uh, let's try tap on this one and let's make the action play an animation. Um, now uh, I believe th these. These are animation assets, and they already have animations attached to them. Uh, so in this case, uh, the animation that is attached to it is this robot character. And then you can see it is actually going to do this animation. It's already built into it. So um, yeah, we can set that up. Uh, again, you can change how fast it is, how it's moving. OK. And maybe one more we'll do is. Uh, Maybe we can do enter proximity. The distance, this is like if you get within a certain distance. Um, I think 10 centimeters was fine. And maybe we'll just say when that happens, it will. Um, maybe it will move. And you can set the offsets. Like maybe this one will just move up 40 centimeters. What does that look like? So you can see it just moves up. And. Maybe we want it to go uh, back and forth. Um, OK, so we've set up some basic interactions on this. And now we can go into the preview mode and actually you know, work in the scene. So I'm going to do this thing where I tap on the guy, right? Uh, and he starts moving. Um, again, you can save this file, open it up in uh, on a mobile device, and then you can uh, uh, actually preview this in real world footage. This is just giving us kind of like a empty, uh, you know, an empty world. I want to just, uh, whoops, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get close enough to the star that it triggers the animation. So I'm, 
I just want to double check that I, I have this trigger, enter proximity. Uh, maybe the distance is a little bit too, too, uh, too small. Okay, let me just edit that uh, to 50. Let's see if that changes it. There we go. So now I, I got within 50, and it, you, you can see that it moved up like that. Um, I think the distance 10 centimeters was too small. I couldn't, I couldn't get much closer. And oh, it looks like it's actually stacking the, the animation. So it keeps moving up 10, 10, 10. Uh, but anyways, this is just a real basic overview of uh, just getting started using start, uh, starter assets. And we're going to start making our own and playing around with that. But you can see uh, what that looks like. And I should also say now that... Uh, it should auto save. I've, I have noticed that sometimes it's like a little bit buggy or like if you make changes, it takes a while to update. It's in the cloud, uh, but you can open in your own cloud documents. You can open this uh, and uh, bring it on a mobile device. So we'll, we'll do that uh, right after this. Okay, I've opened up Adobe Arrow on my phone and I found the, the file, uh, Arrow Lesson 1. I'm going to click it to load it. It's going to take some time to load the file. Uh, you can see I have this. This is the camera of my phone. I'm pointing it towards the ground. First thing you need to do is uh, recognize the space. So you're, you're going to have to find the surface, move it around. Once Arrow recognizes the space, uh, you can plop it down there and then uh, I'm going to just switch to preview mode, so I was in edit. It's up at the top. Uh, I clicked on preview so I can see what it looks like. I clicked on, tapped on this character uh, to enable this interaction, and then I uh, got up to that star, and I, uh, the proximity uh, triggered the animation. And we can also record our animations. So I'm. Uh, this is the result of a screen recording I did. I press that record button, and you can see. Uh, you know, this is something that I can show people as proof of concept of. Hey, I, I made an AR experience, uh, and it's tracked into the real space. So this is uh, the final step, kind of in the process.